that is very interesting. Uh, in fact, I've taken quite a few notes that, and possible uh, for for um, arguments that we could discuss a topic we discuss later. But uh, Janet Virtue is certainly not one in year seventy-five. She's shorter than me. I can assure you. <laughs> um, okay, so now we continue with. Um, and my aunt, who is an artist and curator, and I guess, uh, as we all know, a writer from Sydney. And um, she uh, also collaborated with fellow artist Kate uh, Beckingham on Oh Yeah, Cool Great. Um, she is a national, uh, she has shown national and international so and uh, curatorial project in various galleries, including uh, several of them. And, uh, <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'd like to also thank Peggy Mountain for organising this. It's been really great to come to a purchase. It's also my first time and my second day here, and it's been a wonderful experience so far. So thanks, guys, for getting it together. Um, my name is Anne McMahon. I'm I'm an artist and a curator, and I'm a co-director at an uh, artist-run space in Sydney called First Draft. Um, I'm definitely not a writer, uh, although... Well, um, maybe in the future. Maybe in the future this is something I might like to check out. I certainly <laughs> feel quite inspired after those two talks, so... Um, before I start, I wanted to sort of talk about the fact that... Um, I'm going to speak about these topics from the position of first draft, but also my own personal position. And I also thought that for me to do that, I needed to sort of tell you what first draft is so that you understand what, what I'm saying. So um, bear with me if you already know about the institution that is first draft, if I can call it that. Um, so, First Draft is an artist-run initiative that supports the development of emerging and experimental artistic practice through a range of programs. The gallery is run by a rotating board of eight directors on two years, two year terms, so each year there's a four director turnover. Um, it's Australia's longest running artist-run space and was first incorporated in 1985 and formally established in 1986 with seed funding from the Australian Council. Next year, in 2016, marks our 30th year of operation. Since 1986, we have championed emerging and experimental arts by supporting innovative artists, creators, and writers through a number of interconnected areas, exhibitions, professional development, and public programs. So, uh, first draft was founded by Roger Crawford, Tess Horowitz, Paul Saint and Narelle Dubrin. It was founded in response to a lack of spaces for artists to show work in the city due to high rents and unstable art market that sought to bridge the gap for artists between art school and a commercial practice. Um, the gallery's mission was and still is to provide a professional and critical environment in which artists could exhibit contemporary work outside of mainstream commercial galleries. And here are some examples of uh, shows that we've had this, oh, this show this year. And, and this one from last year. Rather than establish a space as an opposition to mainstream practice, First Draft founders aimed for a more discursive approach where each show or program became, becomes a space for different practices and ideas to come into critical dialogue with each other. Uh, this is this reason that so many artists, writers, curators and organisers have come through First Draft and why it has been able to remain open and relevant for almost 30 years. Over the years, the gallery has had a number of homes. It started out with Life and Abercrombie Street, moved to Parramatta Road, then to Chalmers Street, which is this location here. Uh, since then, we've moved to Riley Street in December 2013 due to increasing rent prices. Um, and here are some awesome pictures of our opening in March 2014. So, in our 30-year history, we've had a lot of artists show in the gallery, pretty much everyone, maybe? Lots of people. <laughs> um, it has become an important space for artists moving towards a professional commercial practice, potentially, that are looking to hone their practice post-art school. 
Uh, some of the more better known artists, potentially, that have come through this space include Lindy Lee, Susan Norrie, Michaela Dwyer, John Young, John Nixon, David Briggs, Troy Emery, Sean Gladwell, Nicholas Fallen, Brown Council, Jess Penai, Lionel Borden, Kate Scarfeld, and the list continues forever, so it seems. Um, just this year from Perth, we've hosted exhibitions from local David Atwood and previous residents, <laughs> Brendan Van Heck, um, has just had a collaborative show with James Dodd, and currently there's a curated show by Consuelo, I'm going to pronounce this one correctly. Can you say it? Cavanilla. Cavanilla, featuring Rebecca Bowman, um, which opened on Wednesday night last week. Uh, and a number of these artists that I've listed have also been directors in their time, so it's a really interesting space to work in. We run with an advisory board who currently consists of Lisa Havler, Philip Keir, Stephen Miller, and James Rowland. They, we meet with them twice a year, and as the name suggests, they provide advice about our long-term planning, funding, all of the potential matters that we may face. Uh, following the initial term of founding directors, a decision was made to induct a rotating board, as I've already said, of voluntary directors, each of whom serve a two-year term and um, roll over. Uh, this is a picture of the current directors and the gallery director, Tisha, who is on the right. So currently the directors are Tilly Pierce, Ellen Bryce Fawkes, Jane Gillespie, Kate Britton, Sven Messai, Andrew Brooks, Gina Mayobez, and myself. Uh, we're pretty much responsible for managing all of the programs, um, assessing applications, selecting exhibition program, maintaining the gallery, and planning its future. So we do everything um, to run the sets. But what do we actually do? So first of all, I'm going to talk about the public programs a little bit about national outreach, about our exhibition program, our creators program, and our writers program, in that sort of order. First up in our public programs is the ever controversial artist talk. Um, as an artist myself, I don't really love talking about my work and I can understand that a lot of artists don't really feel like they should need to. So uh, we engage in an artist talk uh, the last Thursday night of every program, but in saying that, a number of artists actually choose not to speak. Um, however, we'd like to encourage a discussion about the work regardless of uh, their willingness, if they're okay with that, obviously, and it's interesting to um, hear what everyone wants to say about it, I suppose. Uh, additionally to this, we also host a number of first draft forums that, for example, um, this forum is back in Kansas, and it was about um, looking at the role the gallery space. So, you know, the, talking about the recent commercial gallery closures, about uh, growing online presence for galleries <coughs> and for artists, and the rise of the art spectacle, and uh, discussions were had about the Sydney Biennale at that stage as well in that forum. Uh, we also host a number of curated uh, sort of parties, maybe, <laughs> programs. Um, which host a number of performance artists that uh, get to exhibit and in their medium on those nights each year. The one we're currently looking at is from last year's Christmas party or Real Life Human Resources, which was created by Tom Smith. And the image here is of Lion Young Studio, who were just the most awesome performers and everyone's just having the sickest time as per all of their great dancing faces. Um, in addition to our local programming, First Draft also is in a unique position nationally. As we are the longest running artist run space in Australia, we have also been able to build a profile and reach out to new spaces throughout the years. In the next month, we have directors travelling to South Australia, Queensland and Tasmania to talk about um, our current application round, which is at the moment open until April. Uh, in addition to that, we've also taken emerging artists to art fairs to offer them national exposure. For example, at City Contemporary in 2013, we had a booth for the work of Pierre van Gelder, 
As part of this outreach, we also participated in a lot of industry talks, forums and symposiums like this one, trying to promote the gallery and what we do and offer insight into a range of, of um, our programs for different people. Our core programming is, of course, our exhibition program. We have one-month shows um, that are always open on the first Wednesday of every month across our four galleries. These exhibitions are selected from application call-outs and are programmed by the Board of Directors. Our last programming round was uh, our most competitive ever, we think at least. Um, and we're really happy that the quality of shows we're able to select from these call-outs. Uh, as I mentioned, the exhibition program is put together based on applications and we do this twice a year and we only ever program six months in advance. Uh, we do this because we want to make sure that the work that we're showing is like indelibly contemporary and fresh and uh, we generally like to show work that hasn't been shown before. So in saying that, because our applications are now open, um, we really assess based on the quality of the application, how quickly you can tell us what you want to do. Um, in the first few sentences, your CV, and how you've documented previous work so that we can get an understanding of what, what you've done or what you're proposing to do. We also have a curators program, uh, which applications are open now for as well. And it's exactly how it sounds. It's for emerging curators who would like to show concept um, in the form usually of a group exhibition. And this is uh, an image of a really fantastic show created by uh, Amelia Wallen last year called Speculative Everything. Uh, and I highly encourage anyone who's interested in applying for either of these programs to do so. Uh, and finally, we have a writer's program, which we're going to relaunch, I think, this week or next week, which has undergone a bit of a restructure over the past few months. Um, we want to try and foster a more expanded arts writing practice whereby writers are positioned alongside artists as both makers and thinkers. It welcomes or will be welcoming writers exploring the intersection of the critical and the creative, the text and its enunciation, and text as both idea and material. As part of the writers <coughs> program, we're trying to engage people in a three month three month program of production. Um, in a type of residency that is sort of not completely a sort of location-based thing, but is a, is a residency nonetheless. And uh, yeah, some of the pieces we're hoping will then go into our uh, first draft annual, which um, will be published at the end of this year. Again, we have our <laughs> call-out open. Um, and here's a few tips if anyone's looking for advice as to what you should do with your application if you'd like to apply. Alternatively, uh, if you want to have a chat about an application after this, feel free to come up and say hello. They close on the 1st of April. Now, I've just said some questions about what we should talk about in this forum. Uh, so the first one that I thought I would, the first one I think was about the critical state of contemporary um, uh, in Perth, and I really don't feel like I have enough knowledge uh, to talk about that at all. So I'm going to the second one, which was about the death of the curator. Um, I'm going to answer this one from the position of a first draft director. So we have our curatorial program, which of course acknowledges the presence and the relevance of curators and their practice. Uh, but of course, um, we also program entirely from uh, applications from artists who curate their own shows. And as an artist and a curator, I feel like these two things can sometimes be quite a similar function. I'm not sure that I really go into a different space when I'm curating to when I'm being an artist. And in fact, potentially I'm an artist that is just curating my own work or something like that. But um, the role of the ARI, Fast Draft supports obviously the development of the experimental uh, artist practice through a range of programs. 
And due to the, obviously as I've already said, the, the nature of the rotating board, um, the focus of our RE changes sometimes significantly with the change of board. So we've gone from focusing on, say, um, you know, more a feminist focus, feminist art focus, to a craft or fringe practice focus, to potentially a performance focus. So it's, it's interesting to see how our focus changes as our directors change. The question of critical feedback um, is always something that as directors we're talking about and how to offer that feedback to our artists and to our audience is something that um, is a, always a, a vague area potentially for us. I think critical feedback is maybe best uh, delivered through <coughs> our public programs where we offer uh, a chance for everyone to discuss topics which are relevant right now, such as the Biennale of Sydney last year, and the year before, 2015. Um, and I suppose that's where I would say our um, <laughs> critical feedback potentially is expressed. In saying that though, um, I know a number of people who engage in their own peer art uh, feedback sessions. For example, I'm part of a session called the Mega Early Breakfast Club, which was um, actually uh, developed by um, Klaus Bissom, I can never pronounce his name, Bissom Bob, is that right? Is it Bissom Bob? Anyway. Uh, so essentially what we do is we meet really, really early and uh, at 6.30 and the idea is that everyone is usually free at 6.30 and we talk about our practices. But the Mega Early Breakfast Club is, oh wait, no, hold on, it's called, actually it's called something else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brutally Early Breakfast Club. <laughs> um, and I suppose that's where we talk about feedback and we give each other feedback and we say this is what we're working on, what do you think? So more than anything I think that that is something that we negotiate on a peer level but potentially that's not the right way to do it. Uh, and that's what I came up with in response to these questions and I'd like to thank you all for listening. <laughs>